Jun to join us uh, at this event. I'm uh, very happy. This is the fifth year. So uh, I consider this very successful in my small little uh, association for the past couple of years. And uh, this event is one of the events that really make me um, uh, sort of think about what I have been doing for this association, being able to connect uh, different um, industry, merging uh, art with uh, commercial, creative industry. So this is uh, uh, one thing that I will continue doing and inspire me to look for more artists, more new collaboration colla um, opportunities. So um, this year, again, this is our life right now, fifth year of the um, uh, International Illustration Exhibition. Um, every year we chose uh, 10 artists from Macau and we chose another city um, uh, all over the world to, to collaborate. So this year we find 10 artists from London particularly. And we, we did the exhibition opening already in London back in August. Met a lot of new friends and uh, see the city, learned a lot about, uh, the, about the art scene in London. That's a, it's one interesting thing that um, you actually can learn the country so much by through art, through music. And um, this August, we were able to uh, tap on that page in London. And uh, today, we're very excited to bring one of the artists here to uh, give us a talk. And a little bit different, because I'm the founder and um, organizer for this event. But this year, I invited Eric, uh, my, my friend and my colleague, to be this year's curator for this show. Um, a change of... Uh, uh, I, I like to work with people. I like to collaborate with other people. They give me, uh, we just bounce off ideas uh, of each other. And he has set of his uh, circle to, to really um, bring in different talents. So I want to pass this mic to Eric and uh, he will tell us a little bit about his experience this year. Here you go, Eric. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today to have you guys in front of me. Um, so it has been a very challenging year for me. Um, I've stayed away from art for quite a while now, but uh, it's the time when I met Christine, she offered me this chance to be an artist and also a curator. So that was really out of the blue, I was unexpected. But I took this uh, role uh, really well, I think. I believe that I did a good job, right? Have I did a good job? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, quite challenging at the beginning because I need to uh, identify 10 UK artists. Uh, I don't know them at all, so I need to send in, sending them cold emails or cold calling them. Uh, but eventually it works really well and everything pays off. And then uh, also publishing as well, that's a lot of issues going on. You have to double check everything. Um, and also uh, the venue in UK, that was, uh, that was a little bit of hiccup there when we uh, actually rented a, a gallery in London Brick Lane. Uh, just like a week before the exhibition started, uh, they suddenly told me that, no, it's not going to happen. So I was in a panic mode. We were in a panic attack, pretty much. So, but anyway, uh, everything uh, pays off at the end. So... Thank you so much, Christine, uh, for having me here. Um, I would like to talk more about uh, the UNI, uh, this organization. we offering a platform for a lot of the local talented artists in Macau to really offer them a chance to learn, grow, and most importantly, to engage with uh, other artists across the world. So I think that's a very important part of uh, UNI. Um, I would like to announce that next year we are going to Prague. <laughs> if we get a funding, yeah. And I was I also like to use this opportunity to introduce you, my dear friend, and now all the way from London, six thousand miles away from London, coming all the way to here to give us a little talk on the other room over there. So, shall we move to the other side? Okay, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.
Testing. Testing, testing. Hello. Is that working? That's working. And maybe. Right. Is everybody here? <laughs> okay, let's do this. Better? Okay. Great. Hello, everybody. How's it going? All the way from London town. It's really... I just have to start by saying thank you so much to Eric and Christine for organizing all of this, um, having me. It's very, I'm hugely honored and I just wanna say the way you guys are championing um, young artists globally is really wonderful. So I'm really honored to be part of it. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of dive into it. My name is Arnel Voka. I am a designer and an illustrator based in London. Um, I've been, I'm originally from South Africa, actually, and I've been living in London for the past four years. Um, but before I get into all of that, um, let's go back to the beginning. Also, please <laughs> bear with me because I'm quite nervous. <laughs> I have like moral support. Um, so if I go right back to the beginning, as a little girl, yeah, I like playing in buckets for an odd reason. Um, I really love drawing people and I love drawing faces. And I had uh, a, like a massive love for the Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtle. um, I remember being a little girl and kind of drawing things and going to my neighbors and trying to sell my drawings um, to get some money to buy chocolate. Um, so that entrepreneurial streak kind of stuck with me <laughs> since I was a little kid. Um, but the older I got, I kind of went on like quite a weird route to get to where I am now. Um, but I just want to tell you a quick story about where I started off. I studied in South Africa and um, my first job I was based in Johannesburg where I went into advertising and broadcast design. And I remember there were all these like really great briefs that were coming into the studio that had to, um, that had to do with like character illustration and character design. and. Um, my boss at the time kind of told me he doesn't see me as an illustrator whatsoever. And um, it was a, I think at the time I was obviously very upset and I took it quite badly. <laughs> um, but looking back, I kind of, I kind of re like realized why, where he was coming from um, because I didn't have enough of a body of work to prove what I was capable of at the time. Um, but the reason I'm telling you the story is because it was like such a pivotal kind of shifting point in my career because I ended up moving um, to Cape Town, great city, and, um, <laughs> um, and I started working at a small illustration studio and um, 
at that time, I really just kind of poured myself into the work I was doing. So I started collaborating with other illustrators within the studio, and we started doing storybooks. Um, this one specifically was for a friend of mine. It was like a story based on um, how they'd first met. And um, it, was, it was at that time where I started kind of delving into drawing things that I really loved doing. So this one is from a childhood memory where I really loved swimming. So you'll see a lot of that throughout my work. Um, I also really loved kind of doing landscapes and telling stories through pictures. Um, I really loved drawing animals, so I kind of started doing a lot more of that. I love foxes and just the shapes they make, so you'll see a lot of them as well. Um, I also love kind of telling stories and pictures, so this was like a series of landscapes I created, and it was more about the feeling it conveyed as opposed to the subject, if that makes sense. So in the first one, there's a man rowing his boat under the moonlight. Um, the second one, there's a cowboy smoking a pipe, watching the sun go down. And then the third one is kind of that juxtaposition between this icy landscape and being inside and really cozy in front of a fire. Um, and I think this was my creative journey. And I think I think back to this boss that told me I would never be an illustrator, which I think is quite funny now. But um, I'm almost grateful to him because he, he made me really like question my career at the time. And um, this was like a kind of reminder for not only me, but for all of you is like, don't let anyone else determine your worth or tell you what you can and can't do. Um, but enough of that, embracing freelance life. So in 2013, I decided to go freelance in Cape Town. And um, I was really kind of lucky to land this incredible job um, with a great creative director at the time with Ogilvy. And um, she gave me like comp complete creative freedom in terms of exploring my creativity and coming up with characters and coming up with these like fantastical worlds. Sadly, this job never kind of saw the light of day, but it was still a really great experience. Um, and I kind of continued doing more and more illustration and did um, a storybook with an agency based in Dubai, which was kind of like the first window into doing like more global projects. Um, I also started doing like a lot more work for clients based in London, which was really great. Um, but also that one in the top in the middle, I started doing some work for a nonprofit in um, South Africa just because I wanted to maintain that connection to my roots. And then 2016 rolled around, and um, this is when I made the giant leap to move from South Africa to London. Um, originally, I hadn't planned on being there for particularly long. I was only planning on being in London for about a year, and like four years down the line, I'm still living there. <laughs> um, but I think some t a lot of people kind of, um, when you start freelancing, People assume that it's this like crazy, awesome ride and everything's just smooth sailing. But when I first moved to London, I didn't know anybody, I didn't have any friends. So I decided to go back to full time just because I needed some kind of um, routine. And um, I didn't know the city very well, I didn't have any friends. Um, I knew one or two people and they were kind enough to let me like live on their couch for like a few months whilst I found my feet. Um, but the reason I have this is I joined um, a nonprofit, which is a sector I'm not familiar with at all. Um, I was coming from an advertising kind of background and I stepped into this role where we were doing a lot of work around empowering women and girls' education. Um, and I'm really grateful to them because they kind of made my transition to London that much easier. And I think it's really, I think that's one of the things. Like if you can find your group of people like all the better to you, especially if you come from a new city like London. Um, so that's all of us up there. Love those guys, they're amazing. Um, being a boss lady. So a year into being full-time, I realized that it's not what I wanted to do anymore, and I was like, okay, back to freelance life. Um, so I decided to kind of start freelancing, but also to launch my own um, business idea, which was kind of born out of 
drawings I would do between waiting for feedback on projects. So whenever I was working on something and a creative director needed to like go and speak to a client and come back, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do something with Doodle. And they kind of just became more and more and more and more like elaborate. I started adding leaves and patterns. And um, out of this came this idea of um, customized um, stationery. So this was the first range, which was based on portraits. I was like, okay, finally doing this whole business thing. Let's see how this goes. Um, also, full disclosure, these photos were all taken with my iPhone. Um, and then it kind of just started growing out. Um, so I started like applying things to tote bags and um, doing more and more patterns and experimenting with um, screen printing. And um, last year, and the, like actually, yes, last year was the first time that I actually decided to do a Christmas range. And then I started kind of exploring my creative style a little bit more and simplifying things and um, really kind of working on um, like what my unique creative stamp is. Um, I think a lot of my work um, features women because I work for a nonprofit that works with women. And, um, but also, for me, it's about diversity and body positivity, big thing. Um, and I was quite excited to have made those pins based on these ladies, like a big win for me. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, creative process, because I think this is, this is also like a very personal thing. And, um, I've spoken to so many people over the past few months that have um, that have asked questions around like how you do things, how you get things into production. Um, and I think for me, um, carrying a sketchbook around is like really important. Um, I recently got an iPad and a pencil, which is super handy. We had airports for that. Um, but yeah, it starts off as like a very, very rough sketch. This one's probably like this big. Um, and then kind of like refining it um, either digitally um, and then deciding what print medium to use. Um, and I don't think there's like a right way or a wrong way. I think it has to do a lot with like what you feel most comfortable with. All the beautiful, like the incredible illustrators that are committed to this exhibition are all so diverse and so different, which I think is also really important. Um, London Life, cool. So. For me, it was a big part of it was about like, um, especially coming from South Africa, touching down in London, it was like, okay, so how do I connect to people and how do I put my name out there? Um, and one of the things that I decided to do was like take part in the London Illustration Fair. So it's this annual fair that takes place at this incredible warehouse along the South Bank um, that overlooks the River Thames. Um, various artists from all over the world come and sell their wares. And I think the most incredible thing about taking part in fairs is like interacting with your customers directly, with like what people like and what they don't like, um, and also just the sense of community and connection you get with the other exhibitors, which is awesome. People are actually so supportive and so lovely. Um, also took part in New Designers, which was a really cool exhibition as well. It kind of features business into their first year. Um, also, it was my debut into learning how to use a jigsaw. <laughs> it was exciting, especially in a tiny flat. Luckily, I had a great cooper. Um, and then top draw. So this is more of a trade fair um, where if you want to get into larger stores, like buyers will come past and show interest and they'll get you to come and see what they want. So that was a... That was like a huge learning curve for me. I had no idea how to price things out. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Um, but it was really good. And um, luckily, I had like some lovely friends that were able to help me set up who have never been able to do that before. Um, and then I wanted to talk about um, one thing that's like really important um, as a freelancer, I think, for me especially, was this feeling of isolation and loneliness that can happen, um, especially if you're working from home. Um, you know, you need to like reach 
have all the kitchen cupboards and if I can never get anything done, that's not handy at all. So this past year, I signed up to this um, co-working space called The Wing that's just launched in London. It's like a, um, basically like a girls club. So um, a lot of um, young women join the space and it's an opportunity to network, um, share ideas. And not only is it incredibly beautiful, <laughs> um, but it is, it's just a really good space to kind of have where you distinguish between like personal space and um, space where you can get things done and actually get your own folks thing. Um, yeah, and then things in the making. So 2020, I'm hoping to do some cool new things. Hopefully, like more homeware and wallpaper and interiors, which is quite exciting. Um, and then obviously growing out like um, more patterns and hoping to be in more stores globally. Cool. Um, and then I wanted to kind of reflect on, like I'm sitting here in my car right now, so this is a big deal. Um, but like you said, like a few months ago, we were in London and these were just like a few little snapshots of the opening night. Um, there's Eric and they can see me in a beautiful coral dress. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really great experience and um, it's just amazing to bring like various artists from all over the world together. Um, and then I wanted to just offer some advice before I stop talking. I can talk about that. Um, so number one, be ready to ask for help. Um, I think I think when I first started out, I always felt kind of guilty for asking for help because you don't want to burden anybody or put anyone out. Um, but I was actually really surprised, like how supportive people. So kind of be vulnerable, put yourself out there. Um, number two, make friends and network. Um, it really is all about community. I think um, the, the more you can connect with other people, the stronger you'll be, not only like as a, on a personal level, but on a professional level as well. Um, and then lastly, um, practice and find your own unique creative voice. I think it's so easy to get stuck in that spiral of comparing yourself to other people and questioning your worth and if you're good enough. Um, but there is only one of you and like your voice matters and um, know that. So yeah, thank you so much everybody. Any questions, anyone? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> okay, then. No, I, I thank you, Arnel, for a really personal, uh, nice um, little talk about yourself and the industry. And I've always, uh, well, I have a day job, you know. I work for, <laughs> I work for SJM, me and Eric, and uh, we work for retail. And um, besides our day job and um, People that who know me, we, uh, I have artistic background, I'm a musician. And um, as, as uh, all the artists, is we, we wanted to work alone, but at the same time we wanted to connect. We always wanted to find a platform to show our music, our art, to really share. Because for me, I believe that um, you know, if the world collapsed tomorrow, uh, the one thing that really you will remember is the people around you and the things that you've seen. And um, I'm out of breath just because I had a couple of drinks. <laughs> I cannot drink Asian Asian thing. But uh, but it just always makes me so happy to um, see people here and learning about uh, new things and uh, hearing your story. It's very inspiring. You know, it's, I think that's a part of me. I always want to be a full time uh, um, artist. But it's so hard to make that true, especially in a community like in Macau. But I see, I see things have been changing for the past couple of years, and uh, the government and a lot of association is pushing that way. And I believe there are always way when there's will. So um, thank you again for coming today, 
and I thank you Eric for putting everything together and I hope this can continue for uh, many many more years to come. Thank you.